on TV, on radio, and on your smartphone. This is Talk TV. I'm Piers Morgan. I'm censored tonight. The High Court rules that Prince Harry cannot hire the British police force for its own private security, just days after he ripped up a frenzy about his security in New York. As Harry's big PR gamble over all this spectacularly backfired. A Christian school teacher is struck off reportedly for misgendering a trans pupil in the first case of its kind in the UK. He joins me live. Plus, the village people are threatening to sue Donald Trump for using their legendary anthem YMCA. Yes, young man. Live from the news building in London, this is Piers Morgan Uncensored. Well, good evening, London. Welcome to Piers Morgan Uncensored. I was going to start tonight's show with a little monologue about Prince Harry whining again, being in court again, moaning about security again, the usual stuff. It's not uninteresting. He lost a big case today uh, in his ongoing battle with the British government over his right to have proper royal protection whenever he's in the United Kingdom. And he wants us, the British taxpayer, to pay for it. Or if that's not the case, he wants the right to pay for it himself. Well, that right today has been rejected. And we're going to come to that debate in a moment. But I can't get out of my head something I watched earlier. I just can't. I'm trying to, but it's lurking in my membranes like a large lizard because I can't quite believe what I heard. This is Sir Ed Davies. He's a knight of the realm in the United Kingdom. He's had the tap on the shoulder from whoever it was, the Queen or William or Charles or somebody, um, for his services to this country because he's supposedly an intelligent man. And yet, on this morning with Nick Ferrari on LBC Radio, he was asked that whole question, what's a woman? What do they look like? And this is what he said. Think about it and debate it with a bit more maturity and a bit more compassion. Well, that's what Sir Keir Starmer once said to me, and he never did answer the question, can a woman have a penis? Well, I've just answered that question. They can. Um, listen, I've made it really clear that if people, um, uh, the vast majority of people, will have the same gender as their biological sex, but a small number won't. So a woman can have a penis? Well, quite clearly. What? Sorry? What, what do you mean, quite clearly? Sir Ed, what, what are you talking about? Quite clearly, women can have penises. What are you talking about? You are the leader of a major national political party in this country. You've already seen the First Minister of Scotland lose her job for being unable to defend women's rights, for thinking it's fine for a male rapist to be put in a women's prison. She had to go. We've seen Sir Keir Starmer wriggling around. I mean, let's watch a bit of Keir Starmer trying to explain what a woman is. For 99.9% of women, Everything is a matter of biology. For 99.9 something percent of women, um, it's all biological <clears throat> and it's very straightforward. And let me be clear, for the, for the vast majority of women, this is all about biology and of course they don't have a penis. We all know that. I don't think we can conduct this debate with, you know... Sorry, have I, have I, get I offended this, you in some No, way. no, no, it's just... Uh, no, 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 I just... A I woman can't have a penis. I don't think that um, discussing this issue in this way helps. That's Sir Keir Starmer, another knight of the realm, knighted because he's a smart lawyer, intelligent man, also failing to explain simply what a woman is, which, of course, is just an adult human female. It's not a trick question. This ever used to be a controversial thing, and yet he can't answer... And now Sir Ed Davey has taken it to a new level altogether. Let's just replay what Ed Davey said again, just to really try and comprehend exactly what he's saying. And I think we need to manage this and think about it and debate it with a bit more maturity and a bit more compassion. Well, that's what Sir Keir Starmer once said to me, and he never did answer the question, can a woman have a penis? Well, I've just answered that question. They can. Um, listen, I've made it really clear that if people, um, uh, the vast majority of people, will have the same gender as their biological sex, but a small number won't. 
so a woman can have a penis. Well, quite clearly. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Isn't it? Or have I gone mad? It's unbelievable that in 2023, this is now something that political leaders are saying, that women can have penises. They can't. Just a biological fact. It's not transphobic. It's not about trans rights. I absolutely believe that trans people should have rights to fairness and equality, like everybody else in life, regardless of any, anything else. But you cannot deny biological scientific fact. And when two of the three major political parties in this country are run by men who are denying biological fact with these public statements, what does that say to women in this country? Who's defending their rights? Who is explaining what a woman is? Who's standing up for women? Who is just telling the country what a woman is? It's unbelievable. Anyway, rant over, but I have had that clip in my head all day and I can't get it out of my head. Thank God Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, when I asked him that question at number 10 Downing Street, just simply replied, it's an adult human female. That's all that needs to be said. Like a man is an adult human male. And trans people are trans people. And everyone should get respected. But you can't deny biological fact. Right. I've got that off my chest. Um, let's turn to Prince Harry, who last time I checked is identifying as a very irritating adult human male. I'm joined now by the author and historian Dr Tessa Dunlop, former chief and superintendent of the Registrar of the Police, Dal Babu, and Talk TV's royal editor Sarah Houston. Right, Sarah, just bring us up to speed, because Harry's involved in about a 1,000 legal actions at the moment against the world. What is the thing that happened today and why is it significant? Today, a judge decided that... You are Harry... identifying as a woman, are you? I am indeed. Uh, Harry couldn't uh, have a judicial review on his request to pay for his own security when he comes to the UK. So when he was still a member of the royal family, working member of the royal family, he was entitled to 24-7 police protection, paid for by the taxpayer. When he stepped down in 2020, he lost that automatic right. He's got another legal challenge, which is about the decision to remove that automatic right. This in particular was about him wanting to pay for it. He made the offer that he would fund it. The Metropolitan Police said, we're not guns for hire. The Home Office said it would be inappropriate. And today the judge has decided that it isn't right. It would set a wrong precedent because effectively you could have all kinds of wealthy people coming into the UK saying, well, we want to hire Metropolitan but Police Officers to protect us. But he can still win the review about the basic principle of whether he should be allowed moral protection when he's here. Yes, and that review looks at the way in which the decision was made and the fact that he wasn't part of that decision. So it's not over yet. And actually, he could still appeal against this part of it. But for now, he, he can't take it further. He does still have... We don't have a date set for the other wider case about him losing his security. It, it's about automatic security as well, because actually it will be judged on a case-by-case -case basis. So when he was back for the coronation, he was part of the security bubble. He was protected because he right. was attending a royal engagement. This is about when he comes back okay. with his family. All right, Dal, you've been a you know, senior police officer in this country. As a British taxpayer, regardless of my personal feelings about Harry and everything else, just as a British taxpayer, why should I be paying, just on principle, for someone who's quit the royal family, quit royal duty, gone off to America, now makes hundreds of millions of dollars, normally by trashing his family, whatever, you can take a view either way on whether you agree with that, it's not really relevant. But why should somebody who's made that conscious decision to exit both the country and the royal family and royal duty, why should they get such a perk when they come back here of being protected by our Royal Protection Squad? Well, I think that's a legitimate challenge, and I think that's what a lot of people are asking. What do you think? Well, I, I don't think he should be entitled to that, because I think he, he's not a royal working royal. If you're a, a working royal, no matter where you are in the pecking order, then you have that right to be protected. He's essentially... It's a commercial enterprise now with Prince Harry. He's a celebrity. Yeah, so he'll come along and he'll want, to, he'll want that, all the resources there. We don't actually know how much policing the royal family costs. 
Uh, so essentially, he's unaware of what, what that cost would be. So in terms of the process now, he will, if there is a legitimate target placed on him, mm. if there's any intelligence placed on him, he will be, like everybody else, have uh, police protection. Right. For specifically for that. But I think what he's asking for is general uh, protection 24-7, which he's been used to all his life. I think he's now finding it extremely difficult to realise that working as a celebrity, working on a commercial basis, then it, the world is totally different. Tessa, why? Why should we be paying for him to have unfettered access to one of the top protection squads in the country? I'm going to explain to you in a sec why I think we need to flip that question around. But just to answer initially the point, or rather pose another question, is once a prince, always a prince. And I think what's interesting about Harry's case is the naivety, the presumption that everything that was around him, he wore like a second skin. If you have 24-hour security from the day that you're born, you probably don't actually realise where the line is, what's being royal and what's just being a regular bloke, celebrity mm. or not. And I think it's been hard for him to shed that prince skin. He never will. It's one of the reasons why he's a global celebrity. But, Piers, the good news is, and it's somewhere to turn your attention in the future, if Harry isn't deemed to be a sufficient risk to need this protection and we've we the public have shed that royal skin for him then i would counter why don't we start examining the bloated security bill that so many of the royal family guzzle and incidentally we don't know how much that cost is it's higher than the sovereign grant they think because whenever people put in a, so, an information um fyi on it they don't get a response so you would take away prote protection I... oh hang on for working royals who are day by day Oop. doing their duty for the country and in return, they get protection because there are lots of people out there that may want to harm them. Uh, They're targets, right? We know that they've been attacked before, right? You would take all that away. No, you're putting words in my mouth. Well, I mean, what would some, you do? Of, some of the lesser royals don't require... Which of the working the royals would you take it away from? Well, for instance, I mean, did you get hot under the collar, as you have just done now, on gender and Harry, about Eugenie in 2009 having a security brief involving... They don't have security two, now. ..involving two policemen who went with her on her gap year to Cambodia Sorry, and Thailand. Sorry, just, just to be clear... To be clear, that's, I was that, out, that was the I case. was out with both her and her sister recently for lunch. They have no in security. In 2009, she had two working policemen with her in Cambodia 2009? and Thailand. 2009? I'm just saying, did you, you, did you lose years. it over that? I know, but I'm saying, actually, we have a vast security bill for less the royals do people like Sophie and Anne need security if Harry and Meghan they everybody but they don't have 24 7 security. no exactly. they have security when they're on royal but they have security when they're on... and often their properties have 24 7 security paid for by us but I think what you'll find now this whole debate will perhaps look at what is the cost of protecting the royal family generally yeah and I don't and I don't think Harry has got a clue around what the cost is I mean I remember when the Queen and Prince Philip uh, attended uh, Enfield it was a huge operation, not just the uh, plot team, the, uh, the, the specific mm. plot team, but on top of that, you would have had every single venue would have to be searched by licensed search officers. You'd have to ensure That's that... That's expensive. Yeah, absolutely. So all of that expense becomes quite significant. And I was, I was talking to Princess Diana's former bodyguard, mm. uh, Ken Wolfe, hugely respected individual. Yeah. And Ken was saying it is quite shocking that during this incident in New York, mm. which uh, ironically was days before this ruling of had course. come out... Well, I don't think it was yeah. a coincidence. But, uh, yeah. but you, you end up with a situation where they've jumped into... They're, they're worried about security. Put them in a taxi. They're put into a taxi. No idea who the driver is. No, and, and the driver's gone on and sold his story and what have you. They then sat, went back and sat in a police station. Now, if you had... But these are people that worked on Obama's Secret Service detail, a part of this protection team, apparently. Well, I mean, it, it seems incredibly amateurish, the way it was yeah, done. Yeah, I totally you know, agree. And if you had somebody with the skill level that the British, uh, the, the British police have, they would have looked at the journey, where the journey was going to go, where the individuals were going to go, what mm. was going to happen. All of those eventualities would have gone... You wouldn't have been jumping in, a, in the back of a minicab. Saying, I did find it, and it's interesting how it's played out, isn't it, Sarah? Because when it first broke that story, you know, I was at home, I was like, oh, wow, this yeah. looks really serious. What's happened here? This is memories of Diana and everything else. There's been no footage. There's been no pictures. There's been nothing. This is New York City, Upper East Side, at 10 o'clock at night mm. on a Friday or whatever it was, right? It would be rammed with people mm. with cameras. Nothing. There's no evidence that there was anything like a two-hour high-speed chase through Manhattan. It's not even possible. The traffic wouldn't allow it. And then they stick him in a cab, which goes round the block and then comes back, and so this goes on, all to protect... 
them from revealing where they were staying. Well, this is about a standoff between Harry and the media, isn't it? Because Harry did not want the paparazzi to get a photo of him, and he's paying for that security. But he's literally so... just been, yeah, but he's just been at a massive. That's on his terms, though, isn't it? For his it? wife yes. to get a completely spurious award for being the world's most inspiring woman, for reasons that baffle me, but anyway, each to their own. Is that...? It's is just that, Harry. Is that Harry and Sorry, it's, it's just <laughs> um, once again. I'm, I'm looking for his milk of human kindness. But they've been to this sort of, you know, self-aggrandising media event where, of course, it's in the middle of Manhattan. It's in midtown Manhattan, crawling in paparazzi. Mm. Of course it is. Of course they're going to follow them wherever they think they're going to be going. Mm. Why stay at a private residence you want to keep private? Why not go to the hotel like they normally do? I mean, it's a battle of wills, isn't it? He doesn't want them to get what they want. If it's not on their terms, he doesn't want them to have that photograph. And if you're paying for the security and you've said to your security detail, your one job is to make sure they don't get a photograph, yeah. it's different but to Tessa, here's my problem the with this. Police. Here's my problem with this. They just... I don't know what it is. I don't know what is really motivating, whether it's just a blind hatred of all the media, so any tiny thing they want to blow out of all proportions so that it looks like they're being hunted or whatever. But everyone I've spoken to about this incident in New York has said it just was not anything like the near catastrophe they were painting. I can see there is a contradiction between their hunger for celebrity and their desire for privacy. But Piers, I'm asking of you mm. to try and find some sort of empathy. I know you weren't mm. born a prince. I know you're a pauper done good. But the bottom line is that boy had everything and it is far harder climbing down in life than it is climbing up. And he has bucket loads of anxiety to do with his childhood, to do with the way in which you know his mother You know what? Here's one of his more so it's difficult for them and they're going to have to keep on here's my to pay for the Here security. is my honest response to that, right? He has brought all of this on himself. No, he hasn't, picked right? because of what he was He goes doing. on like he's the only person to lose a parent, apart from anything else, right? I lost... My father died when I was one, right? William lost his mother at the same time Harry did. He doesn't behave like this. This guy's quit the country, quit royal duty, quit everything, gone to California, lives in a wonderful mansion... And he sells his family down the river for vast amounts of cash every chance he gets. I, I have no sympathy he's not at all. He's perfect, Piers, but he's naive and he was to the manor born. And you asked Dal, Harry every day will be working out how he pays for that gigantic security brief to keep his paranoia in check. How much does it cost? Well, Be honest. Yeah. To give someone like Eugenie or Anne or Sophie yeah. protection. Well, well, the, the they, they don't, they don't I mean, get it. We've we, already we, established that. Yeah. Yeah. They get, they get mean, it in their own royal duty. Yeah, we haven't got the figures, but, but I mean, I, I think the, the difficulty... It is an enormous figure. And I think the difficulty is with Harry, I don't think he understands how the world works in terms of how all that intelligence comes in, the briefings that will yeah. have to be done. And do you actually want somebody walking down the high street to protect you, uh, solving your burglaries, solving crime? Do you know what he wants? He wants to... He wants... I think he just wants to have his royal cake and eat it. It basically boils down to that. He wants to be... Like, he tried to propose to the Queen, half in, half out. He wants the good stuff, the celebrity status, the money, the, the trappings, the royal protection. He just wants to put the shifts in. Mm -hmm. You know, in Cleethorpes on a wet Wednesday, going to, going to an old people's home. And that's not the deal that the public has with the royal family. It's just not. The deal is they do all that stuff hundreds and hundreds of times a year, and in return, they get the trappings and they get the security and everything else. I mean, his argument would be, well, I was born a prince. I didn't choose mm. the way I was born. I am still a prince. Look at prime ministers. Former prime ministers still get their protection they do. in life, should they choose it. Yeah. Uh, regardless of how long they yeah, serve. they do. He did serve. That's such a good point, Sarah. She's the winner. Nobody would ever question the service he gave his country, least yeah. of all me. So I, let's I, keep his protection when he's here. I wish that guy was still that guy. That's all I can say. My brother-in-law taught them at Sandhurst, William and Harry, said he was a great little soldier. But do you know what? If he got his protection, he'd come over Why don't you and ask, give you more stuff to Ask 100 about. soldiers what they think of Harry at the moment. Well, I mean, Harry, Harry he's been doing to the he went out, he, he, he actually broke the code. He talked about going out there, shooting. I mean, he, he Boasted made, about oh, his... Come on, yes, loads yes, of yes, yes, but he's, but guys have done that. Yeah, but he's, he's made himself more vulnerable. More I agree. He's more of a... He's, more, he's, he's, not, he's not particularly bright. I think no, he's when not. you go out there, you think all the people that would perhaps want to do him harm, he wanted to add to that and says, look, I've killed a lot. Absolutely right. It was just kind of... I don't really think... Good. I think there's too much wacky-backy in California, unfortunately. But that's just an allegation, unsubstantiated, apart from regular confessions in his book. Thank you to my star panel. Much appreciated. Uncensored next. A Christian teacher is banned from the profession for using the wrong pronouns for transgender people. It's the first case of its kind in the UK, and he joins me live after the break.
passionate and always straight to the point. World-class broadcaster Vanessa Feltz is on Talk TV every night of the week. From politics to pop culture, there's no subject she shies away from. And remember, if you're thinking about it, we're talking about it. Join Vanessa Feltz on Talk TV every day from 4 p.m. He's back and he's uncensored. Debating the breaking news and talking to the biggest names. Piers Morgan is live every week with a host of stars. Uncompromising, unmissable, and uncensored. And remember, if you're thinking it, we're talking about it. Piers Morgan, uncensored, Monday to Thursday at 8 p.m. on Talk TV. Conversation. Oh no. Uh, with the People's Channel. No, already used. Uh, every little helps. For God's sake, is nothing original anymore. It's finger licking good. I'm loving it. Look, let's be honest. We don't have any fancy speechwriters here, but we do. And I promise you, discuss the issues that matter to you. Yes, I'm back. Talk TV, not with Morgan, just before him. Monday to Thursday at 7 pm. Join me. Just do it. Well, that one too. Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Joshua Sutcliffe was a maths teacher at the Turwell School in Oxford. That was until one lesson in 2017 when he praised a group of female students on their hard work. Well, one of the girls identifies as a transgender boy. And this week, in the first case of its kind in the UK, Joshua Sutcliffe was banned from every classroom in England for not using the pupil's preferred pronouns. Mr Sutcliffe said he apologised immediately and is being persecuted because of his Christian beliefs. And he joins me now. Well, thank you for coming on, Piers Morgan, I sense it. Thank you, Piers. Just tell me exactly what happened. Um, well, it, it was the TRA um, hearing um, in recent months, and the principal reason that they uh, banned me from every classroom in the UK, as you mentioned, um, was for refusing to use the pronouns um, that a particular student wanted to... So what did you actually say? You called the group girls? Yeah, it was two, two girls at the front of the class and uh, one of them identified as a boy. Um, and I agree with the policy exchange report recently released by the government where uh, it says that, you know, um, we're letting down a generation of young people affirming them in these, um, you know, dispositions. Um, you know, in the UK, uh, you need a gender re recognition certificate um, and that is post-18. And so um, it really is a serious um, issue and it's affected schools across the nation. And so I mean, we're I, seeing a lot of kids now identifying as something other than their biological sex. What do you think of that phenomenon? Well, I think it's um, really something our society t should be taking much more seriously. Um, you know, it's a path... You, these students go down a path of taking very strong drugs and surgery, and um, it's something that shouldn't be so quickly brought into classrooms across the country. And it's happening uh, everywhere, as, as you've seen in the news reports, not just for me, but for other teachers. So you called these two students girls. One of them was a transgender boy by her own, or his own, 
definition, whichever you want to say it, right? This is at a time, this is, you know, five, six years ago when this issue wasn't anywhere near as prevalent as it is now. Did you realise immediately this might be a problem? Uh, I, well, I wasn't really um, savvy. I didn't know about the issue as we've come to know yeah. about it. And, um, you know, but at the time, with my Christian convictions, I, I thought it an appropriate stance to, um, you know, uh, just use the student's name. And what happened to you? Um, well, I mean, the school sort of took uh, a case against me and it's ended out all the way at the... What were you department. accused of doing? Of accused being... of using the wrong pronouns. Literally? Uh, uh, literally, yeah. Accused of using the wrong pronouns. And that was actually the principal reason that the Department of Education used against me, um, that I refused to use the pronouns. So really quite a shocking and sad day for myself personally, but even for England, uh, you know. I mean, the argument that was put forward against you was that you should treat all pupils with dignity and respect, and if they're identifying in a different way, then you should feel mandated to do that. Well, I think the safeguarding of the pupil is paramount in this situation, and if you affirm these students in their um, gender identity, then that could lead them down a path um, that maybe one day they will regret, regret. And, you know, maybe it's something that we th should think about, um, you know, leaving for adults to decide rather than uh, such young students... I'm going down this path. But See, on, on this, I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of sympathetic to, to what you're saying about that issue, that the pronoun misgendering and so on, with so many kids now following what I think in most cases is just a fad. Why should people have to change their language to accommodate what seems to be just a fad? The complication, I think, in your case is that you have very strong Christian beliefs or I would say beliefs that pertain to your religion. Would you accept that? I accept that, Pierce, yeah. So you have uh, four abominations on your website, for example. Yes. Um, abortion, homosexuality, porn and Islam. Yes. You call them abominations. Yes. Is it right... Well, I mean, when I read that, I was like, hang on. Is it right that any teacher should be teaching kids if they call those four things abominations? We well, understand, Pierce. Those things happened outside of the classroom. You know, that's my own personal. I understand that. Yeah, I understand that. Um, but in one, in one case, it was cited that you had, for example, on the issue of gay marriage, you'd said to kids in the class that it should be between a man and woman. Yeah, um, a student asked me about my conviction, and and that was what I said that it should marriage should be between a man and a woman. But um, you know, the Bible very clearly um, describes many things as sinful and as not good things for us. And, uh, well, the Bible, the Bible also tells you to stone people for various offences, and we don't do that anymore. I mean, the point is... Well, we all deserve... I mean, look, I'm um, a Catholic, a but, but I, wouldn't, I wouldn't use language like these are all abominations, mm. um, particularly when a lot of people in this country are now gay, obviously. You think that that's abominable. Yes. Um, and that's fine. That's your, it's your prerogative to have that opinion. Mm. But there will be people who think, well, hang on, this, th these are pretty hardcore views of someone who wants to teach young children. I understand that people might disagree with me, Pierce, but um, I'm, that's a pretty orthodox Christian view to think that these things are sinful and not um, good. I don't know any Christians who say Islam is an abomination. I mean, I know some, but they're not. It's not orthodox. Well, that's not orthodox Christian teaching. Uh, of course, it's standard Christian teaching, you know, to to not agree with Islam, and you know, to, to not that it's an abomination, another religion. There's respect for Islam. Well, I respect Muslims very much, Pierce. But you don't. You call their religion yeah, an abomination. We must separate ideas from people, Pierce. Well, hang on, hang on. Listen, on your website, you say Islam is an abomination. That's not respecting a religion. Well, it's the opposite of respecting a religion. No, I, I disagree very much with Islam, Piers. So. That's fine. It's entirely your prerogative. Yeah. I'm just saying that if you want to be a teacher, is it compatible with being a teacher to have a personal website which lists a series of abominations, including the right to be gay, the right to have an abortion, legal pornography, Islam, another massive religion with one and a half billion people? It, it just seems to me if I was a, if I was a parent of that school and I read that on your website, I would be concerned. Well, I think it's up to parents to look these things up if they want to, but all parents that I've um, had interactions with would say that I'm a very respectable man and I always uh, did the job at hand. But um, I think in our free society, you'd think that I'd be able to share those things outside the classroom. You now go into the street and you, you talk. Let's watch a little clip of what you do. That there is one way into heaven. His name is Jesus Christ. This is an urgent plea with your spirit, man. I'm not just talking to your minds. 
I'm talking to your spirit, to your heart, that you might be awoken from the death of this generation, that you might be shaken out of the depths of darkness and into the glorious light of the kingdom of God. I mean, again, I'm not sure I'd feel that comfortable about having a teacher of my young kid who's out there doing that every weekend. Um, you know, it's pretty orthodox Christian beliefs that I'm... It's fine, but you're a teacher out there basically ranting away on the street. It doesn't... It wouldn't lend itself to most parents to think that that is entirely compatible with teaching kids. Well, you'd have to see me in the classroom, Pierce. I'm a, I'm a good practitioner. When were you last in a classroom? If, well, three or four years ago now. Do you want to teach again? I'd love to teach again. I enjoy teaching. My dad's a teacher and I've... You know, what does your dad make of all this? He, su- he supports me, yeah. He, I mean, he, yeah. Does he agree with all your views? Um, well, he's a, he's a Christian himself, Piers. He was an RE, yeah. he was an RE teacher for, for um, 30 years. But does he agree that all these things are abominations? Well, example? Piers, this is biblical teaching. It's not, it shouldn't be a surprise to you or anyone else. That no, but like I said, the Bible also teaches people to stone people to death. But we well, don't that, do that well, in uh, that's the, civilised that, places that, anymore. That, that's the penalty for sin, Piers. But Jesus, so for adultery, Jesus you would, died on the Well, just to clarify then, he, for adultery, you think it's right to stone people to death? I think that... As they do in all, Saudi Arabia, for example. Do you? All sin deserves the death penalty. And Jesus... So adultery is a sin? Let me finish, please. Well, hang on, hang on. Is it, adultery it, a sin? It's an important point. Is adultery a sin? Jesus died on the cross for sinners. He, t- is it, he took the place Joshua, of sinners. is adultery a sin? Yes. So you want to execute everyone who's committed adultery? All sin, all 613 commandments, all sin is, is punishable by death. Right. Joshua, that's nuts, mate. <laughs> and that's what the Bible says. And that's the problem, you see. Piers. You start off, you have me at the start. <laughs> you have me about the pronoun issue, because I think it's incredibly complicated. And I don't see... I also have a big concern about the number of kids who are basically putting their hands up saying, I'm a woman, I, I'm a girl, I'm a boy when they're not, uh, and so on. Um, but this stuff is nuts, mate. If you're going to say that everyone who's a sinner by the rule of the Bible has to be killed... There's no one left. Deserves the job. There's only you, there's only no, you left, and I don't feel comfortable I'm, about a world I'm, I'm with only Josh, Joshua Sutcliffe alive. And don't be silly. I am the worst of sinners, Pierce. Well, why are you still alive? Because Christ has died for sinners. Huh? He, he took the place. Yeah, of but sinners. by your yardstick, you should be executed. Yes, I should be. Who by? <laughs> God. He's the judge of all. No, but you're going to. I mean, you're going to uh, go and submit yourself for execution. Or? No, but Jesus is. It's called penal substitution. Huh? It's called. It's a. It's a. It's a theological point. It's, Joshua, it's not. It, it's mate. the substitution of Christ for sinners, Pierce. Joshua. It's nuts. I, I, and unfortunately, you feel that when way. you talk that way, it disqualifies you in my eyes from being a teacher. Not the pronoun stuff. On that, I'm with you. On this stuff, it's nuts. But we're, we should be in a free society, Pete. Totally. And you're, by the way, allowed to have as many nutty views as you like. It, I just don't think... That's nutty in your opinion. I think your opinion no, is nutty. No, in 99% <laughs> of the entire planet, your views are nutty. In your world, maybe, but not People in don't think that large, everyone who commits adultery should be executed tomorrow. No. Uh, this is the, what the Bible teaches. Greed, g- gluttony, all those oh, things. A, a sin is sin. Peter. So anyone's greedy gets executed. Sure. Anyone who's gluttonous gets executed. Have too Christ many donuts. Joshua Sutcliffe says you wheeled off to the. This is what the Bible teaches. To Chris. be put to death. And, and this and this isn't really being taught in our generation. No, there's a reason no. it's not taught in our generation. But Christ is, is completely the sacrificed no. for sin. Yes, I know. Jesus Christ did sacrifice Himself, but you don't think Jesus Christ would be sitting here today at my desk saying. Every single person who commits an act of greed or gluttony or adultery should be summarily executed. <laughs> well, if well, you do think that, of God. if you do think that, you have a very warped idea of well, what I, actually I, the Bible is supposed to mean. No, I think what's happened is you've got your own view of what the Bible says, but you haven't really ever been told what the Bible says. I've read the Bible. I was actually given spiritual guidance by Catholic nuns when I was 11 years old. Uh, for and a couple of so years. So I'm very, very, this very is the savvy first time that you've heard with the Bible. Things. But honestly, when I hear people say that for all these sins, you've got to be put to death, it's nuts. So for that, you shouldn't be teaching. Well, Christ has taken our place, Pierce, and I think I should be... In well, unfortunately, uh, I'm someone I'm from YMCA is about to take your place uh, on the <laughs> show, I'm afraid, and that's it. But good to see you. All Thank right. you, Joshua Sutcliffe. On Sense of Next, the village people are taking on Donald Trump over his unauthorised use of their iconic anthems. A village person will debate that with me live if he hasn't sinned too much in the break.
passionate and always straight to the point. World-class broadcaster Vanessa Feltz is on Talk TV every night of the week. From politics to pop culture, there's no subject she shies away from. And remember, if you're thinking about it, we're talking about it. Join Vanessa Feltz on Talk TV every day from 4 p.m. He's back and he's uncensored. Debating the breaking news and talking to the biggest names. Piers Morgan is live every week with a host of stars. Uncompromising, unmissable, and uncensored. And remember, if you're thinking it, we're talking about it. Piers Morgan, uncensored, Monday to Thursday at 8 p.m. on Talk TV. Oh no, uh, with the People's Channel. No, we're already used. Uh, every little helps. For God's sake, it's nothing original anymore. It's finger licking good. I'm loving it. Look, let's be honest. We don't have any fancy speech writers here, but we do, and I promise you, discuss the issues that matter to you. Yes, I'm back. Talk TV, not with Morgan, just before him. Monday to Thursday at 7 pm. Join me. Just do it. Well, that one too. This is Talk TV. Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored and Still Sinning. You probably recognise this disco anthem. Well, YMCA by the British people has been the soundtrack of weddings, bar mitzvahs and pretty much every drunken night I had as a teenager. More recently, it's become the unlikely soundtrack of Donald Trump's rallies in America. There's no need to feel down. I said, young man, pick yourself up. will do the Trump. It's actually quite a nifty mover, but the group has now threatened to sue Trump over the use of their music and a lookalike band that played at his Mar-a-Lago estate without their permission. They argue that fans now believe the real village people are endorsing Donald Trump and they threatened, well, basically to go to legal war with him. So there's a long list of artists have argued they don't want to be associated with Trump in the past. And I'm joined now from Atlanta by the British people's Victor Willis and by MAGA rapper... Forgiato Blow, who's in Florida. Well, welcome to both of you. Victor Lewis, uh, thank you very much indeed for joining Victor me. Victor Willis, like a, thank you, sir. I feel like a part, of my, a part of my life has just appeared on screen. So thank you for all the entertainment over the years. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Now, your wife, Good. Karen, Good. I believe, is leading the legal battle with Donald Trump over this on behalf of the band. What is your problem with Donald Trump? using your music and, and uh, look-alike bands and so on? Well, first of all, let me, again, thank you for having me on the show. Um, as far as Donald Trump is concerned, let me 
I'll say that the uh, president, Donald Trump, um, I like the fact that he likes my music. Um, as far as him using, playing the music, um, I asked him a long time ago not to play the music, but, but at the same time, legally, he has a right to play it. I mean, anybody can play it that wants to. The particular problem came along when Donald Trump decided to have some people dress up like village people right. and have them at Mar a Lago performing to uh, the song that I wrote and it was singing. And it made it become a situation to where I got a lot of calls and a lot of emails from people and fans, et cetera, that were like really upset by the fact that they thought that we were endorsing Trump. And this is where the confusion became to where my wife, who is the manager of Village People, at the same time she's a Jewish doctrine lawyer, uh, I myself am the original lead singer and writer. I wrote all the songs, YMCA, right. Macho Man, et cetera, in right. the Navy. And um, we were uh, bombarded by a lot of fans that were, were upset by the fact that they thought that the people that were performing at Mar Lago were actually the village people. I got it. You know, whereas village people, we're not, we're, uh, we, we stay out of politics. We're not a political group. We do not, we wouldn't endorse a Trump and we wouldn't endorse a Democrat. Okay, we got it. We wouldn't endorse okay. anybody. We stay right. out of that. I got it, Victor. Let me go to Forgiato Blow. So this is not really an anti-Republican thing, Forgiato. This is basically a we want to stay out of politics altogether thing. Shouldn't that be respected if, if village people, one of the great bands in the world, who've entertained the world, if they just want to say, look, we don't want to get political at all, shouldn't they have that right? No, I don't think in the world right now. I mean, we have a platform and we're teaching, you know, the new generation, which Trump is also putting on their song. Um, I understand that they don't want to be political, but I don't see it's a problem. I mean, there's five to eight-year-old girls around the world dressed up like their favorite princess singing Frozen. Are we going to stop them from doing that every single day? I don't see what the problem is. I just feel like it's an attack on Trump. Anything Trump does, people say, you know, Trump is above the law. He's not. He's under the law. They go at Trump for everything. Um, so I just think it's an issue. I don't think that's a problem. I think he's All right, well, let me ask you a question. the song get bigger. I... All right, for you, what, what's mm -hmm. been your biggest hit? Uh, my, uh, biggest my biggest song is not actually a mega song. It's called Vanilla Sprite with Rick Ross and Vanilla Ice. Uh, but four more years, probably my biggest song. But if Joe okay. Biden or BLM or any type yeah. of organization wanted to play my music, I really wouldn't care. I'd, I'd so be that for was going to be my question. So you, you wouldn't mind if Joe Biden did that at his rallies, your song? No, because Trump's not being negative playing it. He's got to dance. He's making everybody in America, especially this America we're living in right now, happy again. You know, making America well, he's only Trump making again. Those who support I mean, Trump's him not happy doing again. it negative. He's he's being happy. He's not. I, I could see if he was being disrespectful let, let, to them. They know their legends. Okay, let me bring. All right, let me, let me bring Victor. See, let, let, me, let me bring let me Victor back in, here, please, sir. Victor, but come back in, Victor. Yeah. Let me interject here. Thank you, sir. Number one, uh, young man, you have a misconception of what I just said. I said we do not mind Donald Trump playing the music because we don't care who plays the music. He has the right to play the music as much as he wants. That has nothing to do with the particular situation. Uh, we would not, we would not be saying anything. As a matter of fact, YMCA with him playing the music, went all the way back up to number two on the billboard, something that I wrote over 40 years ago. So it is not a, a problem with him playing the music. Matter of fact, it helped us as a group. The situation became to where we had to put the cease and desist out when he had people dress up in our costumes and perform at mar lago which gave a lot of the fans the impression that it was us as village people endorsing him as uh, a political I know, but uh, idea. OK, let me bring in Forgiato to respond I, to that. I don't think nobody thought the endorsement was going to make a difference in what's going to happen in this election. I feel like uh, karaoke is not illegal. People dress up on Halloween. We're going to stop. We're going to cancel Halloween. People, I mean, they're, they, their group, they're dressed up. He's sitting as a police officer. You got construction. Was he the first police officer ever to be a police officer? Was there the first construction? Uh, well, you know something? I have a confession. Workers? 
Yes, yes, I yes, I would, yes we I were. Chaps, I have a, I have a confession to make. I actually went. You as were the Don first police officer. Well, hang on, let me finish. I actually went as Donald Trump. Yes, so I, I was. To guys, do what guys, I do. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm running this interview. I actually went dressed as Donald Trump to a Beverly Hills Halloween party. So I didn't get his permission. So I'm kind of sympathetic to that. But did you get election. sued? Did you get a, did you get a cease and desist about that? that Not Trump yet. Loved it? Not yet. Trump, I've, I've met. It. A lot, Trump gets a lot of hate from people who don't know physically met Trump. Trump's a nice guy, great guy. I've never seen nothing negative in person about him. I just feel like it's, they have a great song, they have a great music. Okay, Us let me end on a happy we note. We love Macho Man, we let love me end music. On a, okay, let me end on a happy note. Victor, how much money have you made from... Yes, sir. How much money have you made from YMCA? Well, I've sold over 100 million records over the years. Wow. Um, so I can't, so I, I mean, I'm, you know, I've sold quite a few records, et cetera. Again, it was, it was the fact that. No, we um, get it. We get it. It was the, the, it fans, was the yeah. The I, fans I think... are the ones that approach, that started bombarding me with the fact of, of seeing uh, pe the, somebody dressed as village people. But you know and, what, you I know mean, what, Victor? Maybe they didn't pay You know what, Victor? Here's the thing. They were doing it as a tribute to you. I mean, there's actually a different way of looking at it, as Forgiato says, which is, it's kind of flattering, isn't it? I mean, there must be village people tribute acts all over the world. You can't go around so Well, them. you know, if they if they had announced it, that, that you know, there are several tri tribute groups that, that perform. I mean, you know, if it was announced that here's a tribute group to the village people performing Macho Man or whatever. It would be nothing to say. I got it. I mean, you I got know, it. So I'm, I think we should. I think we're going to clarify to. We'll clarify to President Trump if he introduces them as a tribute act, it's fine. But if he tries and passes them off as the real thing, there can only be one, one village people and only one Victor Victor That's Willis. Correct. And what an amazing star you've been and the happiness you brought to people of my generation and many more, but particularly mine, because my teenage years lit up with your music. They so you said it's a pleasure to have you on the program. And you, Forgiato. Thank you Thank both. Thank you so much. Thank you both very much. I appreciate Trump it. Trump 2024, let's go. Oh, Forgiato, you had to ruin it, didn't you? Uncensored next, Lib Dem leader Ed Davey says a woman can quite clearly have a penis. Quite clearly? That is bonkers. We'll debate that with the Pierce Pack next. and always straight to the point. World-class broadcaster Vanessa Feltz is on Talk TV every night of the week. From politics to pop culture, there's no subject she shies away from. And remember... If you're thinking about it, we're talking about it. Join Vanessa Feltz on Talk TV every day from 4pm. back and he's uncensored debating the breaking news and talking to the biggest names Piers Morgan is live every week with a host of stars uncompromising unmissable and uncensored and remember if you're thinking it we're talking about it Piers Morgan uncensored Monday to Thursday at 8 p.m. on talk TV
Interrupting Britain's conversation. Oh, no. Uh, with a people's channel. No, already used. Uh, every little helps. For God's sake, is nothing original anymore. It's finger-licking good. I'm loving it. Look, let's be honest. We don't have any fancy speechwriters here, but we do. And I promise you, discuss the issues that matter to you. Yes, I'm back. Talk TV, not with Morgan, just before him. Monday to Thursday at 7pm. Join me. Just do it. Well, that one too. Coming up on the talk, eco zealots bring chaos to the capital with more slow marches before police put an irate driver in handcuffs. Boris Johnson hits the headlines as he's referred to police over new lockdown breaking claims. And hold on to your hat. It's been revealed the average cost of attending a wedding has soared to a thousand quid. That's all coming up at nine. Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. I'm joined by the political journalist Ava Zantina and talk to you presenter Richard Tice. Right. Have you sinned, either of you? <laughs> <laughs> Every Today? day, Piers. Yeah. Every day. Come Why on. don't we even start with you, Tice? <laughs> Actually, and you. Uh, and me. And you. We're all doomed. We're all doomed. What did you make of that interview? I, well, I mean, I grew up in a Catholic household. Yeah, I do. And I don't know anyone who acts that fundamental no, about not. anything. And, you know, when I read the headline this morning and we heard about yeah. you know, him... And you feel instinctively quite sympathetic, I think. Most well, you wouldn't, obviously, because you're no, but, as hell. No, OK, well, I read it and I knew immediately there's got to be so much more to this. There's no way he's just, you know, yeah. slightly mispronounced. And there is a lot more to it. Yeah. The, more, the more I spoke to him and got out of him, the more extreme his views became, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it, the reality is, on the pronouns thing, he's right. Yeah. Well. You know, it's just... It just... That is not the right way to be... Uh, teaching and addressing mm. people in schools. There's no question at all. Do you mean all. using the wrong pronouns? Isn't no, the right way using... Yeah, but when you've got 10% like of kids now in some schools identifying as something other than their biological well, sex, at that, that point, it is ridiculous to no, expect it's... teachers to even try and keep up with this yeah. madness, right? But it, but it's, it's insane. It's a it's fact. Insane. It's, it's a fact. Is. It's like, 10 of them are doing it, I'm going to do it. It's... Honestly. Yeah. But that doesn't matter. You don't believe for a moment that 10% of students in this country have dysphoria, do you? you I do think that transphobia is where homophobia was about 10 years ago, no, maybe 20 no, years ago. Issue, I do. It's an issue of safety. I do, role. and I think that people... It's, it's, it's unnecessarily it's not causing anxiety. We're not actually talking children. about transphobia. It's not a these aren't actually tra issue. These aren't it actually... is a safeguarding issue. It's not no, a pronoun issue. That Pronouns aren't a safeguarding issue. I understand if a child might be going off to seek some sort of therapy and you need to let the parents know. I understand. That. Encouraging but the discussion it, of gender questioning asking. in primary school. Uh, by the way, and do you know do you know why trans people are having to put up with extra mockery? And I feel very strongly about this. That pr proper trans people who are not just doing it for a fad, but genuinely believe they're trapped in the wrong body. Many of them have surgery and so on. I know people who've been through this. It's an incredible ordeal they go through. When they hear a leader of a political party like Sir Ed Davey of the Liberal Democrats saying this. This is what causes the problems. We need to manage this and think about it and debate it with a bit more maturity and a bit more compassion. Well, that's what Sir Keir Starmer once said to me, and he never did answer the question, can a woman have a penis? Well, I've just answered that question. They can. Um, listen, I've made it really clear that if people, um, uh, the vast majority of people, will have the same gender as their biological sex, but a small number won't. So a woman can have a penis? Well, quite clearly. Gave a perfectly good answer there. Oh, but quite mean. clearly, women can have penises. I think you can. You ask a reductive question and you get a reductive answer. Quite I mean, clearly, yeah. women can have penises. It's a biological penises. question which demands a biological answer and he's completely wrong and he wants well, to be it's... the leader of the country. It's absurd. No, you don't believe women have penises. I do believe that some trans women can have penises. Not trans women, do. women. No, come on, don't be so reductive with that question. It's not because, reductive. Because it's if a... I answer that this question... Is why, this is why women's sport is being destroyed. No, it's not. Because people will not distinguish between trans trans women and women. OK, right, well, you look... You cannot damage biology. You cannot deny biology. You just can't do it. I and mean, political leaders say, clearly, women have penises. You know what happens? Trans people, real trans people, 
they get mocked and they get vilified what, for it. What, what That's what increases of transphobia. What's a real trans person? Perhaps Ed People Davey who genuinely is, no. do feel they're trapped in the wrong body. Perhaps Ed Davey is referring to real trans people who feel they are trapped in the wrong body. But That's who he's talking person. about. They're I not mean, a woman, Ava. Listen, it's, it's the biologically same. impossible. Why, why <laughs> as a woman, are you not keen to protect women's rights to be women? I don't think it affects my rights whatsoever. What does, it affect, does. What does affect my rights is You've that You've got this male rapists being put in female prisons. Hang on, Piers. You've got male sprinters and swimmers and, and cyclists destroying biological females at sport. What more evidence do you need? Piers, none of that is a threat to me. Do you know what is a threat to me? The fact that I can't walk home at night safely. The fact that I know that 1% of rapes reported go to conviction. Different issue. This, it's not a different, different issue. Different issue. Because you're arguing that men are dangerous and they shouldn't be in women's spaces. That's what well, I right. agree with. I've got no problem with coming with you on that journey to make places safer for women. You don't make places safer for women by allowing male rapists into women's prisons because they go, ta-da, I'm a woman. It's bullshit. Anyway, uh, let's agree about one thing before we finish, which is that there is one great woman in this country that after the Queen's uh, very sad death, there's one left in my estimation, other than my mother, obviously, and it's Dame Joan Collins, the magical Dame Joan, who today turned 90 years old, probably won't thank me for reminding her, uh, but she looks about 50, certainly younger than me, Happy birthday, Dame Joan. You are a proper woman, and we salute you on this show. Thank you, Pank. We can agree on that, right? We can agree on that. Remarkable. We exactly. always be that. I'll tell you who does keep it uncensored. Joan Collins. That woman. and always straight to the point. World-class broadcaster Vanessa Feltz is on Talk TV every night of the week. From politics to pop culture, there's no subject she shies away from. And remember... If you're thinking about it, we're talking about it. Join Vanessa Feltz on Talk TV every day from 4pm. He's back and he's uncensored. Debating the breaking news and talking to the biggest names. Piers Morgan is live every week with a host of stars. Uncompromising, unmissable, and uncensored. And remember, if you're thinking it, we're talking about it. Piers Morgan, uncensored.